While the USA was in the middle of its civil war, it would have been very odd if every other imperial power had sat by and done nothing. Most European empires actually wanted the South to win, just so they wouldn't have to deal with one huge country in the future. How right they were. But they didn't get directly involved. That would be too risky. Instead, they picked on little old Mexico. And that's where our story starts. So Mexico has just had its own civil war, the War of Reform. It's between the Conservatives and Liberals, under this man, Juarez. It all happened after the Liberal Party wins an election and starts passing laws to seize church land and force indigenous people off of their land. So it's a bit of good with a lot of bad. Some start to fear a civil war as the Conservatives start siding with the Catholic Church. What a shock. So they fall into a civil war that lasts four years, the Liberals win. Only one problem. That war was expensive. So both sides had taken loans from the USA and several European powers like Spain, Britain and France. Lots was destroyed in the war. And rebuilding is expensive. The government is broke. So they say they won't pay any of those debt payments for two years. So they can sort themselves out. Oh no, 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 no. Britain, France and Spain say, we want our money. And all of this is happening at a very interesting time. It's 1861 and the American Civil War has just started. It's interesting because of a little thing called the Monroe Doctrine. Maybe you've heard of it. But it was a statement put out by President Monroe saying that the USA would prevent European powers taking territory in the New World, by force if needed. When the doctrine was announced, it wasn't that big a deal to the Europeans, but by now, 40 years later, they're realising how powerful the USA might become. That is, until the USA isn't in a position to do anything about it. So France has an idea. When I say France, I mean Napoleon III, the Emperor of France just like his uncle, the OG Napoleon. He tells Spain and Britain that they should show a little force, teach the Mexicans a lesson, and maybe install a random Austrian royal family member as their emperor. Spain and Britain were in until he mentions that last thing, and now they're out. Okay, 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 Napoleon III says. Maybe just teach them a small lesson and leave. Sure, they say. But why does Napoleon III even want Mexico? It's so far away, and it was a Spanish colony until only 40 years before. He's come up with another great idea, Full of ideas, this one. The idea is Latin America. You see, French and Spanish are in the same language family, the Romance family, meaning they more closely come from Latin. So if Spanish-speaking Central and South America joins forces with France, they could rival Anglo-Saxon North America. That's the big idea. So Latin America. But it's part of the idea. Just a little fight, little invasion, nothing major. They will just take Veracruz. The three countries turn up and take it. They negotiate with Juarez's government a bit. And it seems like everyone's coming to an agreement. Let's leave them at the negotiating table for now. Let's take a minute to look at how the USA is feeling about this. They're chill. Do what you want, European empires, they say. Nah, they're pissed. Some want to offer to lend Mexico the money to pay the debt, but the Senate votes it down. And that was the end of that. So the three empires leave. Well, not exactly. Napoleon III was lying when he said he wouldn't invade. Spain and Britain are like, fuck this and leave. France stays and pushes in land. They also have some Austrian, Belgian and Egyptian slash Sudanese troops. Austria because of the random Austrian. Belgium because their royal family are related to the random Austrian. The Egyptian slash Sudanese are fascinating and I'll be releasing a short related to that that will get into this. Lastly, the Mexican conservatives decide to join the French. From now on, we'll call this coalition the Imperialists and the elected government of Mexico, the Republicans. So they fight the Republican army in the Battle of Puebla. This took place on the 5th of May, 1862. Cinco de Mayo. This is the reason Cinco de Mayo is celebrated in Mexico, or more in the USA actually. And that's because they win and humiliate the French forces. But it's not enough to turn the war. Napoleon III sends reinforcements. A few weeks later, the Republicans lose in the Battle of Barranca Seca, and then the Battle of Cerro del Borrego but they've still slowed the imperialists down, but the imperialist forces take Mexico City in June 1863. Benito Juarez, the president, flees the city. If the USA was pissed off when the three empires turned up in Mexico to begin with, they are furious now, but still the civil war continues. All they can do is offer weapons and money to help Juarez and his Republicans to win. The Republicans move their capital to San Luis Potosi. The imperialists take even more territory. Then they take San Luis Potosi. The Republicans take back other places, it's all very cat and mouse. This is Maximilian Habsburg, our random Austrian. 
The French keep offering him the title of Emperor. He has some doubts about taking it, mainly that the British would be pissed off. But a year later, the French run an obviously forged poll with 6.5 million people in support of him becoming Emperor. He allegedly believes it. So he's now Napoleon III's puppet in Mexico. Well, as much of Mexico as the imperialists can control. And he's a bit shocked that there's no theater, no railways. So he builds a theater so he can enjoy opera. You know, just what the country needs, having gone through a civil war and being invaded. And now the status of the war is that the imperialists hold the center of Mexico, where most of the people live, and most of the wealth. Juarez and the Republicans hold the north and south. So the imperialists try to take the north and win much of it. Then they go south, but occasionally the Republicans win places back. But the general direction is clear. The imperialists are winning, just very slowly. 1863 becomes 1864. Still no resolution. And in April 1865, a big thing happens. The North wins in the American Civil War. They aren't tied up with their own problems so much, and they have a lot of fighting experience. The imperialists hadn't managed to win when the USA was distracted. What chance did they have now? But still, the war goes on into 1866. The USA tells Napoleon III to leave, but this alone might not have been enough to end it. However, back home, Napoleon III is getting paranoid about Prussia and what they're up to in Europe. He's right to be. They'll be the end of him. He pulls the imperialists out and tells Maximilian, a random Austrian, to leave with them. He thinks about it. He knows the country's in ruins and that the reason he's there, the French army, was about to leave. The yes men in his court tell him to stick around and leave Mexico in this new era. He follows their advice. So the French are gone. Maximilian is still there. How does it end? The Republicans start to win. Maximilian makes a last stand against Juarez in 1867. He loses. He's executed, and that's the end of the whole thing. A whole lot of bloodshed and destruction, and for nothing. But speaking of long, bloody events in history, almost nothing has the reputation that the French Revolution does, especially the terror. Watch this to see how it compares. And as a bonus, you'll get to see OG Napoleon too.